No, we're good. We don't need that. No. No. Woohoo! Yay! I need a shave. Ugh. All right. Woo! Let's see. You want to check your phone? Make sure we're good. Yeah. We're good? Yeah, you are. Awesome. Let me grab a bottle of water. What's up, what's up, what's up? I love it when it does that. Excited for the Dayton DSP. I can understand that now. I um, I don't know if I'd say excited is the word to use, but man, they don't do a really good job of providing any sort of information whatsoever on this DSP, which is a shame because it's really a cool DSP. Howdy, howdy. Did you turn off the compressor? Mm -hmm. Okay, good call. Robert Van Hoy. Uh, what's up from San Diego? <sighs> I hope everyone had a wonderful week. I hope you guys like the new Instagram, Five Minutes with Five Star we're doing. If you haven't checked that out and for some reason you're not a fan on Instagram, go over to Five Star Car Stereo, the number five. I know, it's confusing. Our Star Super Car Stereo. Or just type in Five Star Car Stereo, hashtag Five Star Car Stereo, and you'll find it. Every day we're here, we're going to start the new show, which is... Five minutes with five star, where we go ahead and talk about stuff. Can you ah, that pan was the awesome. camera down so we can see Fernando? Oh, that was mean. I liked it though. Um, Brooklyn in the house, as well as Jamaica. I've been waiting for this one. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, do we cover everything we needed to cover? Yeah. Um, remember, patron. Um. Let's say um one um, more time. Let's yeah. do um. Let's all say um really loud, and maybe we'll hear how it sounds on your end. Move to California so you guys can do my install. Uh, I would like to, but you guys, man, like Florida's expensive, but Nebraska. you guys, it's way expensive. Belgium, what's going on? And we're good, we're good. We're Belgium good because this means, you know, when we do this show, this is like the icing on the cake. That means it's been a long week and we get to go home. So after this, out of here. Hey from Ohio. Happy birthday, man. So, like I said, let's get started. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, this is the Dayton DSP. It is a four to eight, meaning it has four channels of input, eight channels of output. Now it says it will do high level. We haven't been all that successful with the high level side of things, meaning it has the power plug here, and you can, we have RCAs on it because we had it in the lab. Our lab has RCA ends. But we just weren't getting the response we wanted out of it, so we ended up just running the radio directly into the RCA input, uh -huh. and that sounded the best. We also bought the Bluetooth dongle, which I strongly recommend getting, as well as the DRC, or their controller. Now, some people in the past have complained that this adds noise or something like that. It's a total possibility because it is a signal path unit so there is an opportunity for noise anytime you have anything that has signal that passes over it. However, the cool factor outweighs any potential. We experienced no noise when we, you know, we're testing it, so we can't confirm nor deny that. We, it's almost sad that we've been sitting on this piece that long because for him, this fits perfectly in his car right now. In that, what do we got? No, uh, Wayne. Had Raptor come in the shop the other day without one of, with, oh, with one of those. Oh, with oh, one of your, your installs. installs. Cool, man. There was only like awesome. one or two of them out there, so hope it was good. I hope it was good, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Wayne? What's up, John? Hi from Michigan. So in Fernando's car, we have the radio and then pretty much everything else he does over his phone. Yeah. What this is allowing us to do, though, is we can use the DRC as a master volume control for either the radio or the Bluetooth. Correct. That was cool. That was neat. But as soon as it pairs over Bluetooth and you press play on the song, it automatically goes to Bluetooth. So it shuts off the radio and we'll start playing music. And then when you stop the phone, it'll automatically go back to the radio. So it uses the it basic take, Bluetooth switching. It takes probably like three to five seconds yeah. and then switch. So yeah. Now there is a, let me switch inputs here real quick. Yep. Hi from Miami. What's going on, Oscar? Yes, it does make noise. Okay, there you go. Yeah. 
Uh, I we just try it today. It's a signal pass, exactly. so mm -hmm. it, it's going to be just like a crappy RCA might be. But if you'll notice right here, this icon, let me zoom in, we'll get the zoom edge going. Perfect, that's nice. So this is streaming. So if you want to do the task that we just talked about, meaning you want to play Bluetooth and you want to have it also play radio, you turn this on and then when you hit play on the Bluetooth, it'll automatically turn on and do things. Now this is the app. It has your six presets. It has your master volume control here. And then you can, this is, okay. So naturally you guys are gonna want us to compare this to something. So we'll compare it against like a DSR-1 because that's the closest thing. Right away, this is really cool because these are your six presets. Granted, every time you hit one, it takes a certain amount of time to upload. And it takes about the same amount of time as the DSR-1. It's just there are no fast keys on the DSR-1. You actually have to go into your settings and then pick one and then it'll upload and fun there. It's more complicated. But this has your six presets right here all set, ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool, along with your master volume control. You go ahead and you hit settings. And this is going to take you to whatever you had it set to. So you have delay, you have EQ, you have output, and you have mixer. Now, when setting this thing up, the first thing you're going to go to is the mixer page. Now, I'm going to switch over to the software. Oh, I'm going to turn off the TV. Yeah, that's, that's that awesome. Makes that's sense. So I'm going to cause the um, camera to go all kinds of crazy. What up, Let's guys? Thank you for the review. You're welcome, Chris. Hey, that's Christian. Christian was here like a few minutes ago. What's so this up, Lou? Is, this is the software. We're going to head over here to Mixer. First thing you should do when hooking this up, if you are going to be doing anything with it, is come to this page here. These are your eight channels of output. One through eight. These are your four channels of input, okay? So you want to direct this sound to these channels. In the case of Fernando's car, we have inputs on channels one and two. So we're gonna come over here. Uh, let's go back to the mixer. We're gonna come over here and then right here where it says inputs, we can either work the volume control here or we can just tap the mixer input and we'll go ahead and tap channel one. Then we'll come over to channel two and we'll select channel two. Channels three and four are going to be subwoofer and they're going to be paired off of the same thing. So now you can see what we have going on here. These other channels are going to be used. However, that's what's going on in his car. That's not necessarily what's going on in your car. So four channels of input. Let's say these are front and rear. So we'll pick three. We'll pick four. Five and six are going to be our subwoofer. Now, if we want to sum all channels to the subwoofer, we can do that. We'll just simply click all four. That way, and there again, it just depends on what kind of system you have, but if you want to be able to fade from balance front and rear, left and right, and have the subwoofer play all channels, well, there you go. It'll do that there, as long as there isn't any funky issues like all pass filters or EQs or any kind of problems you're going to have there. Over here is your master level control, so you can turn the system up and down. And then these little boxes that say delay. This is your time alignment. That's as sexy as it gets. So your front channel, let's say is, we'll come over here and we'll say 34 inches. Your passenger front is 54 inches. Your driver's rear is 45 inches. This guy here we'll say is 56 and then your subwoofer is 66 inches away from your head go ahead and enter that information in now we can also adjust level here so if we know that that front speaker right off the bat is going to be a little loud because they typically are we'll go ahead and we'll just set that to negative 10. we're going to play with this more when we get it in we can also just type in the number we want which is really cool oh and i screwed it up all right, so we'll go to the next one. Oh, hey, it's not gonna work. All right, so I was doing it last night. Oh, I forgot to put the negative, my bad. All right, so hold on. Negative tab, point, enter. All right, there we go. Now every time you hit enter, it will move across, which is really nice. We could also mute each channel here. So if we're doing our testing, we can go ahead and mute channel, shut off the mixer, because we don't need that anymore. And these, of course, stay put. So this is always open, so you can always get to it. So if I just want to work on channel one, I've highlighted channel one. Now this EQ is for channel one. 
if and this is my crossover so I can go ahead and I can pick my crossover it has high pass it has link with Riley Butterworth and bezel now the reason why we've been waiting to do this one and we did the Alpine first because if you compare the two softwares, not necessarily this interface, but the phone interface, they're pretty much the same interface. <laughs> so whatever house they're buying this DSP from, Dayton, Alpine is buying it from the same house. Now that is not to say build quality or anything like that because DSP is a chip. So it's just a matter of what software you put on that chip. So this is gonna be very familiar to what we were working with last week in that we can pick one of the three types of crossovers in this case, 24 dB, Linkwitz Riley is, is a good one. We can pick our high pass. So each channel, no matter what, can be a band pass or it can be a single high pass or low pass. So if we just want to come in here and we'll, we'll go ahead and put in our typical 80 hertz. The top from Jamaica. Boom, we have our 80 hertz, 12 dB crossover slope. We'll turn it back over to 24 dB. What's up, Jason? What's up, Johnny? And boom. So now we know that these frequencies here don't mean anything as far as these 10 bands of equalization because it has 10 bands. Laredo, How are we Texas. Doing? We're doing good? We're good. Okay, so actually, this is a cool yes. tip. He said a cool, uh, a cool little detail. If you're using a factory CarPlay, you can select playback to the Bluetooth and still use the CarPlay user interface on your car. Where, That's pretty, what, which car? Because most and, of the time, CarPlay shuts off Bluetooth. I can't so, and back, like, man. No, I understand that, but like if no, most but like, of the time you can't use Bluetooth. Because no, but like he said you can. In his car? Yeah. But I can tell it's you right now, on like the Pioneer's Ken was an Alpine. what I say works because I use it. Okay. And there again, not every car is going to give you that feature. It just Correct. depends on what kind of Bluetooth yeah. chip they're using. Because all their aftermarket ones, when you switch over... To CarPlay, plug yeah. it in, it shuts off Bluetooth. Right. And if you have wireless CarPlay, there's no need to have Bluetooth. San Bernardino, what's going on, on Netherlands? How long does it you guys to tune a DSP? Depends on how involved we're getting and what the customer's requests are, but it could take anywhere between, let's say, an hour to three hours. Yeah. Uh, it just depends on how, one, how difficult the car is, how difficult the system is that we're putting in, and what we're trying to get from the car for yeah. example we did that dodge ram was it a dodge ram we did dodge ram monday uh -huh. um for an older gentleman we put the uh 1000 1005 the picture i put the up Q? on instagram the q class 1005 uh -huh. he's an older gentleman he has the factory alpine or not the factory he had the factory non-amplified uh, system it mm -hmm. sounded like crap but he's an older gentleman, so after talking with him, all the cars he's ever owned have the, what's up, Jason, have the speakers in the rear, small speakers mm -hmm. in the front. He's evolved because, you know, he's a smart guy. He's a computer programmer, so he knows the, the, the sharp end of a keyboard. And he's like, I just, I just wanted to, 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 and we're like, no problem. So we weren't, we were trying to go for a certain sound. Like, we still needed rear fill. It was a muted rear fill, but it had to be there because that's what he's grown up listening to. And then again, we wanted a, a, a wider front stage, not necessarily a main vocal in the center. We wanted it kind of wide because that's what he's used to listening to. He doesn't listen to this. He listens to this. So, you know, we spent time going after that 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 sound. Yeah. Uh, and, hang on. Uh, yep. Jim, you can actually type your question right here, man. Um, and if you, we have time, we can answer your question. Uh, we do this twice a week here in YouTube and every Monday, 6.30 on Facebook. And we so. also do five minutes with Five Star on if Instagram. you have, uh, yeah, five minutes. The Acura turned out really nice. So um, what did we do? What's that, Jorge? I'm trying to think what we did in the Acura. It turned out really nice because it's gone and the customer is happy. So that's why I know it turned out really nice. Was that yes. yesterday? Yeah, that was yesterday. That was oh, yes, yeah, so you guys saw. The Acura with the... Uh, Millie Pros. Milli Pros. Yeah. So that customer's request was he is a drummer and he wanted something that had a tremendously accurate cymbal, not a tss sound, but a tss sound, oh. which put us into the Millie Pros because we wanted something that was not going to just kill you 
with loudness, but have accuracy at that loudness, which is what the Mini Pros really are, are good for yeah. loud, accurate reproduction. And every speaker does loud, and, and like Focal does loud, and Morel does loud, but the sound we were going for, every speaker has a characteristic, and what he was describing we knew would be perfect for a Mili Pro. So that's what we used. Mm -hmm. And then we just spent time dealing with getting the sound the way we wanted it. The really cool thing about that TL is that the factory radio had preamp, even though it's it's not a it's a variable voltage preamp section that goes into the factory amplifier. And for the most part, it was pretty flat, meaning there wasn't a bunch of crap in the signal that we had to play with. There was a little bit of dip. What's up from Seal Beach, California? It's all legend. Oh, There's a little sorry. dip in the um, thousand hertz range. Bobby, no big deal. It was like two seconds. Fix that, and then we could go on to the the tune and have lots of fun. Okay, I have this question oh, from. Oh, he can just say wow about the Star Wars. Wayne T say, yeah. would you recommend to would you recommend I feed this Dayton DSP from my pack and Pro, or use the GM both signal to feed the signal directly into the high? No, get the. No, to the high level God, no. input on the DSP. Yeah, uh, yes, no, do an amp pro 100%. 100% yep, yeah. amp pro into the date and it would be fine. It would be cool. And then just do like the setup we just showed and you'll be super happy with the results that you here? have. Uh, let's see, I have another one right here. Let's see. Suggestion for a 2008 Honda Santa Fe Limited. The radio has gone out second time and the warranty is no longer active. I mean, for the most part, any whatever your criteria is. I mean, if you're looking for something that's affordable, cool, and like has Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, the new um, Alpine W650 ILX W650 price is great. It's got a capacitive touch screen. It doesn't have a lot of features. Like it's not deep in features, but it has CarPlay, has Android Auto, has Bluetooth. It's got 50 watts by four. We did a review on it. Go ahead and check that out. Yeah. But for the price, it's it's pretty nice. Um, you can integrate into steering wheel controls and a backup camera. All right. How can the DIB be integrated with an SPL setup? A uh, DSP be integrated with an SPL setup. Oh, DSP. Okay. Well, so the cool thing about DSPs is most of them have some form of a preset. That means that you can go in. So okay, there's certain aspects of a DSP. There's usually three things that are the most popular three things on a DSP. Uh -huh. Let's zoom in and I'll talk about them. Okay. And then you can decide because remember you don't have to use all the DSP. You can use some of the DSP. So right off the bat you have in this has a 10 band parametric EQ. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what a parametric EQ is, we'll touch on that briefly. We'll grab this channel here and we'll zoom up on it and then we will click here and we can pick the frequency we want just by moving this and the frequency will move so we don't have to use the fixed frequency that they've chosen and then we can come over here and we can adjust the width of said frequency so now this is affecting all these frequencies not just that frequency and that's kind of nice that is one of the so that's the EQ so there's nine bands of equalization to play with here and that's important a lot of the times, this is what you're dealing with. This is it. This other stuff, it's cool, but this is where it's at, playing with the equalizer. Now, time alignment, this one little box down here that is time alignment, that's just so that if you're trying to get sound to arrive at your head at the same time, you can play with, you, I won't say play with it, but you can set that up in order to achieve that. In an SPL car, we have speakers everywhere. This might not be something you're going to do but level control for that channel is important. So if you have, let's say, 50 mid-range and 25 tweeters, or the tweeters are up high in the door like they usually are, and they're really like obnoxious, and you wanna drive the car on a normal basis, you may wanna have level control for that individual tweeter, or those, in the, those tweeters. So you can make these like tweeter channels, and you can turn those levels up, turn those levels down, turn the mid-range up and down. And then you have the crossover for each one of these channels. So there's eight channels here. This can be a tweeter channel, this can be a tweeter channel, that can be a mid-range channel, that can be a subwoofer channel. You can mix and match these channels any way you want. There, there are eight channels that can do anything because you have a 
bandpass crossover on all eight channels. That means that I can come over here and we will pick, we'll change this to, let's say 10,000. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna hit enter. So now I've just created a mid-range channel. So those loudspeakers that I have in the door, I can make this channel play that, and then I can come over here and I can link these two together. Now this is a really cool feature on this. So I can link this one, and then I can come over here and I can link this one, and then I can link this, this one, and I can link this one. Okay, so these four channels are now linked. So I can come in here, and if I want to, I can turn it down. And I can turn down all those channels the same amount. Okay, so in an SPL world, all this is going to do, most SPLs, you know, you use some form of a handheld EQ, old school style knobs and whatnot. This can all be done from your phone. So the app on the phone will allow me to do these same things. Now that I've set this hard stuff up, which you can do this on the phone, it's just, it's just, e I'm sorry, it's just easier on the laptop. Yeah. But, I won't even go because I forgot they're not paired right now. But <laughs> so, right. DSP-Y, I'm sorry, SPL-Y's, more for the control. Remember, time alignment is just one little piece. Take that out and you have a bitching control system. Okay. All right. Uh, they say, I love you, YouTube channel. I have a Chevy Avalanche and I'm trying to do the RT, the Kicker Comp RT tents under the seat. Okay. You think the, L, the L7T fit on the box? I'm gonna say it's gonna be the same surround. If you go to Instagram and check out our live today, yeah. we actually compare the two. So you can visually see, we, we take a camera and we, mm -hmm. work and we show you both. You might wanna check that out. Yep. There again, it's that five star car stereo. All right, somebody say, what is the best radio for ASQ? This one. Right there. Sony GS9. Sony GS9. And it's expensive, so don't type back and go, oh my God, yeah, we know. We exactly. Know it's expensive. All, right. All right, when using a DSP, should the gain and the hurt range be matched on the amp and adjust it from the DSP or adjust, and adjust it from the DSP. So the whole idea behind a DSP is to leave that stuff off. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a full DSP and you want to take all advantage of the DSP, then no, you you're, turn all that stuff on the amplifier off. You're going to match your gain like you would anything else for clip or distortion. But as far as crossovers and, and stuff like that, no, you, you want to use these crossovers. These crossovers are way more advanced than the little 80 hertz or 12 dB uh, Butterworth crossover that's built into the amplifier. So let this do the crossover. That's it. This is That's what the DSP does, and it does well. All right. Put your tourists your on the channel one and two. You can. You can do anything you want. There again. Or you made with drivers on the channel three and four and said you crossovers. Yeah. There again. The nice thing about this style DSP is this channels, these are just there for your sanity. So if you want to think like I would, yes, channels one and two be tweeters, three and four be mid range, five and six would be mid bass or rear, and seven and eight would be subwoofer, then or seven would be center and eight would be subwoofer. Either way. Yeah, whatever works for your sanity. Yeah. How would you incorporate a portable portable Bluetooth, Bluetooth DAC, DAC to this into unit? this unit? S portable Bluetooth DAC. Does the, okay, so this has no fiber optic input. It's straight up analog input only. This is it. These are your inputs. You have these four inputs here and those eight outputs. That's it for inputs. This doesn't have a optional input of any kind. So the 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 you know, you'd need, if you're gonna be pairing it with a radio, then you'd need some way to switch between your DAC and your radio. If you're gonna be using your, your, your DAC as your Bluetooth source into this, then you would just plug it into the input. All right, hey, um, can you change the radio tuner settings to Europe on the Alpine radios? No. I'm asking because I live in Turkey. And the FM frequencies are different than yours. Yeah, Correct. No. We know that, no. and no, you can't. It's a totally different tuner that they put in those radios. Um, and especially now that DAB is starting to take hold over in Europe, we don't have that here. We're probably never going to have that here. We went with the Ubiqui Ubiquity HD system, which mm -hmm. sucks comparison, but there you go. All right, so it says thanks, Dean. Will the DSP also assist with the sub volume? Currently using the Pioneer Single Dean and 
So it will give you a sub EQ, obviously. Increasing the value, I'm sorry. Increasing the value, it only reaches the level, but the mids and highs still getting louder. Yeah, so like I said, you're, you're gonna get gain control now. So you can use What's that, these to adjust the level of everything. It doesn't have a dedicated subwoofer control, like let's say a DSR-1 does, but you know, if you set these low and gain these up, that'll do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can voltage match here using these as your master gain controls. All right, I have heard 165.5 mid range and tweeters, uh, kicker SSB eight mid base and MB core uh, 6.9 for the rear channel. Why should I use for an amplifiers and subs? I mean, you know, you're gonna want somewhere between 70 to 120 watts and probably so, three to 500 watts for the sub. Mm -hmm. Pretty much every five channel on the amp on the market will, will cover yeah, that. Yeah, um, like a inexpensive, like the Kenwood, uh, the new- 9605? 90, 90, is it a 9605 or a 99? No, is it 9105? 901, 901.5. The new five channel king with Exelon. Yeah, 901.5, because mm -hmm. it was the 900.5 is the yep. nice one. Obviously the Alpine PDX V9. Alpine you PDX could go V9. with the, the Q class. That's not affordable. I mean, that's no. not reasonable. <laughs> that's like 800 bucks. Yeah. Um, but the Kicker, Kenwood, yeah. Kenwood dollar wise, if you're looking for something brand centric that yeah. is of high quality, it's a high res audio app. Also, really Pioneer, nice Pioneer app. makes 90, a 9605. Yeah, that's not the 9605. No, 90, that's, that's, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 9105. The five channel. 90, one. Yeah, it's weird. The but recent one. Theirs is uh, good. Review on this one. When are you guys doing the review on this one? Right now? This is the review. Are you missing it? <laughs> what, what, what else do you That's want? That's it. This is what we're, we're not gonna go like what are you, a separate video. This is what. I mean, we might after because when we're done with this, is going back into Fernando's car and let him play with it for a little bit longer because we've only had it in his car for a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, just so that we could make sure everything does what it does. I played with it for several hours last night. We played for it a couple months back. Okay, so how much marine audio do you do and have you used the Access DSP in the marine environment? Uh, we sell we marine do... audio. We don't actually install marine audio because we, which just sucks because we're in Florida, but we just don't have any location at this facility to do it because where we are out back, there's no room for a boat. We have no room in the parking lot. So, but we sell tons of yeah. marine audio. We sell tons. Uh, yeah. Why do you guys, why don't you guys build boxes? Two reasons, one, kind of over it, it makes me sneeze. Uh, so two, I don't like the sawdust. The sawdust gets everywhere in the install bay it, and it's not worth destroying the install bay to make a $70 box. It's just, it's not worth it for us. I can, I have, there's plenty of places that we have that will build boxes for us. Bright Star went out of business, but Sean, Sean. the guy that worked for them, mm -hmm. I can get a box from him within 48 hours turned around. So, and between A Trend, Q Power, um, Fox Box. Fox Box. Fox Acoustic uh, Boxes. There's yeah. another another one that we use that out of uh, Sarasota. There, there's plenty there's of places plenty people, that make yeah. the boxes. So, why do I need to destroy my install bay for yeah. it? Yeah. Plus, we'd have to change the blade every time we went to cut wood because our blades are all plastic cutting blades. What's that, Greg? So, to, to cut one piece of wood will destroy the blade. We know this because we've accidentally done it. So <laughs> that's why there's no wood here because I don't want to destroy all our blades. Yeah. But mainly because I'm over it. I've, I've built enough boxes. I've sucked in enough. I, I built boxes for 21 years. All right. 21 years. That's most of longer than a lot of you been on the planet or even dream about car audio. So I'm good. I, I, I think I got my merit badge. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, what did you take on the separate DSP versus integrate DSP in the amplifier in terms of sound quality? Would you prefer a DSP plus the amplifier or a DSP with the amplifier? So that's a wonderful question. And Chris Bennett actually just commented on that. Chris Bennett from Audio, Audio Control. Control. I like the all-in-one. Um, I like the all-in-one because it makes the installation a lot cleaner, a lot simpler, a lot prettier. It's, it's everything is here. I don't have to deal with a box, a box, an interface, yeah. cabling. So if I can do an all-in-one unit, I'd much prefer. He, on the other hand, likes the boxes. He likes more boxes. Now, I don't know if that's from a business point of view, but he seems to think, or his thought on the matter was, 
you know, you have a DSP, you have an amp. If the DSP goes bad, you put in your DSP and you mm -hmm. put an amp and you, you, can, you can move stuff around. But the answer to me was simple that um, you can't really see it. It's kind of no. dark. You uh, hear a little. Right there. It's right there. Yeah, just move it forward. Right there. And this is the Bluetooth and that's the control. But if, for me personally, like I said, for me personally, I like the all-in-one. I think the all-in-one is it's sexy, clean, and nice. I get it. It's like a TV VCR. But it also, there again, it also depends on what you're trying to do. And like talking, like, you know, if we do a kicker Q class, we're not limited by that amplifier. The DSP isn't built in the amplifier. It's the software that dictates what it needs to do. So if I want to expand upon what I'm doing, meaning I have a five channel DSP, I'm stuck. No, I can, with that particular series of amplifiers, I can just add another amplifier and the DSP will expand to both amplifiers. If you're, you know, if, if you're buying an amplifier or amplifier DSP that just has eight channels and that's all you need, that's great. So it just depends on what your end goal is. That's why it's called build, system building. You, you figure out what you want to do and how important those channels are and what you need. I mean, Christopher McNulty up at Driven just put four Forza eight channel DSP and amplifiers Mercedes? in a Mercedes. Yeah. And he literally had to sit there with with the equivalent of four laptops going between each one of the, the systems to get it to where he wanted it. But that's what he needed to do to make it work. Yeah. And that and it was sexy because it all fit in this area that was like this this big. And you know, you have all those channels. That's eight channels times four. You there isn't a single DSP out right now that's that's that big. So it just Okay. Depends. If you lose your tune <laughs> you could blow the tweeters if you don't set the crossovers at the amps. My tune was deleted within a day and I'm getting a DSP user error. That's no good. Mm -mm. Um, so what you want to do, even going full active, is it doesn't hurt to put a cap on the tweeter, okay? It's on Michael. It's on Martin. There's no, there's no, like if you call like, you know, K2s. You call uh, Focal and say, hey, I want to go active on the tweeter. The first thing you're going to do is say, hey, please put a cap on that. Just as a safeguard. It's not hurting anything. If you put it you know, above your crossover point, then you don't ever have to worry about that accident happening. But accidents happen. There is no guarantees in life. Most of the DSPs that we've ran into or that we, that we sell or we deal with, even if you lose your tune, magically enough, it always keeps the crossover. But, there again, we may have just gotten lucky. But I can't think of one case where we've actually lost the tune. And I mean, we'll lose the EQ oh, yeah. and the time correction, but yeah. the crossover always stays. Yeah, the crossover always stays. But anything is possible. But yeah, if you're worried about that, put a cap on the tweeter. Yeah. So the chat tune, my DSP, audio control app, automatically update yes. the software. Yep. We'll wipe the tune. That oh, it will. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But if the shop was cool, they could have saved the tune. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. I've been there, man. We've been there. We've, yeah. we've been there and had this happen. Okay, On um, we'll, we'll, we'll spend the two hours, we've gotten mm -hmm. the tune we want, and then we unplug it, we plug it back in, and auto tries to do the update. We've broken several things this way. We even totally bombed an 810 by mm -hmm. uh, it doing an update and the car shutting off right as we're going to go no and then and then totally hosed it updates are a scary thing when you plug in an audio control if there is an update it automatically asks you do you want to do the update the problem is is we're programmed because a lot of windows users not mac guys are just hit okay every yeah. time a screen pops up because i need to get to whatever's behind it with an audio control you definitely don't want to do that you don't need to con you know if it comes up and says there's an update select no then go into your settings and select save and save it. Because you can always reload it. Yep. And it's there. So you, you don't necessarily ever lose it. All right. Uh, I have a 2015 Tundra double cab, not the crew cab. What sub bags will fit behind the seat? Uh, if you actually want only one sub, like 112, Rock 4 make the, uh, the P3 with okay. the box. Yeah. Uh, that, that fits with right the behind grill. the seat. Yeah, yeah, with the grill, definitely with the grill. Uh, there are a couple not, of them out there because we had that one guy buy that one that, mm -hmm. that fit okay, but I don't know where the heck he got it from. Yeah, just do a Google search. I mean, they're they're out there. It's a skinny wedge box. 
Hertz Energy components over Cento system at nearly twice the price. Yes. Ooh, Hertz Energy components over but Cento But the Centos system are... At nearly... Mm. So the only reason why those high energies are half the price of the Centos is because they're discontinued. Yeah. That's really what it comes now down to. Now they become the They're basically the same... No, the, no, the high energy didn't. No, it's just... It's like they, they don't exist. It's like they're somewhere between Centos and... And yeah, so... There again, I, I, I often tell this story. When, when Focal decided that they wanted to update the K2s, on Monday we had the current K2, and everyone was like, this is the best speaker in the world. Oh, my God, I want a pair of those. And on Tuesday, the new ones dropped. Does that mean that speaker sucks now? No, it's still a great speaker. It's still an amazing speaker. Does that mean there's something better than it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing to be taken away from that speaker. It's still an amazing speaker. You know, speakers don't age they don't change there's just different versions of speakers so you you had high energy one of my personal favorite speakers of all time they, they decided that they were done with that line and they wanted to change things around and go uno dj cento milli yeah whatever yeah so cento, cento pro, pro is replaced for the high energy. energy there you go so cento pro so basically you had cento and cento pro which is supposed to raise energy and high energy if you can get a killer deal on some high energies buy them Know this though, if you blow them, you're pretty much on your own because there's nothing to replace them. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay, love you guys. Can you put a Kenwood ready on a 2014 F-150 without the Sony system, but still have my touch and retain the... No. HBA controls and everything at least without changing the dash. No. No, no. I mean, it's not that you're gonna make the new yeah. one. Yeah, but he wants to retain stuff that's like my touch. It's no one wants my touch. No, I mean, no. Why would you want to keep You know, that? if you're getting Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you don't need my touch. Right now, that kit, uh, I don't know if Metro makes that <laughs> one or not. Touch. No, don't touch me. Um, <laughs> Metro may make that, and if it does, it's going to suck. The amp kit that we had on mm, a month ago uh, that, was in, that we had that we were talking about, that should be out mm, end of summer, and then you'll be able to do it because they have the secondary screen that controls all the HVAC and fun stuff like that. All right. Uh, no, we haven't. We haven't played with the CT Sounds equipment. Uh, Salman plays a lot with the CT Sounds, so seems pretty good. Pretty good Dark. equipment. High energies are awesome. High energies are awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to this real quick and take a look at the app as far as using it and its functionality. So a lot of the things are going to do the same thing. We can pick our channels here. We can pick our output. <laughs> Here's our output volume for individual channels, just like on the main app. So this is just set up a little differently. There's our mute, so we can mute individual channels. Here's our crossover. We can tap on that and we can pick. Comes up really nice. Cancel. So as far as the app goes, the, the, the app is actually really functional. It's, it's not overly complicated, but what makes it nice is that it's just the 10 bands here. And as you're adjusting them, let's go back to channel two. Let's go to output and we'll adjust the crossover. We can do this. Okay, go to EQ. And now if we grab here, we grab here. If we adjust these sliders, here's your frequency here and here's your Q. So we can move the frequency along like we're doing like that. And then we, if we wanna make it wider, we go like this. If we wanna just fix that one little problem, we can do that here. We can go back, and then when we're all set, just press and hold onto the preset. It's gonna come up and say, oh, please connect device. But what it'll come up and say, you wanna save it? You say yes. It'll ask you, you wanna name it, and then it'll come up and actually print the name in the little box here so that you can see what is going on. Output, yeah, EQ, delay. So here's your delay. Now I like this delay a lot better than the laptop only because it gives you a big breakout of it and you just come up here and you can adjust and you can pick across the bottom milliseconds or inches. So if we select inches, we can come, but as you saw, it deleted it. So you have to pick one before you start. Go ahead and enter in those numbers. And now you have your time delay. You can subtract and you can adapt, add and you can come back and it does not it doesn't rotate so if you're going to do it as an ipad in the dash it will not like turn sideways 
So that kind of stinks. Uh, kicker front row, any good? Any experience yeah, with it? We sold one. We've done one, and that was pretty much about it. And that was years ago. Unfortunately, that was one of the cool softwares that Kicker came out with, and it just didn't take off the way they had hoped. So we uh, actually had one. We ended up just sending it back. Hey guys, any chance you know of the AD, ADS? ADS right? was a brand from a long time ago. Really? Yeah, uh, ADS got bought out by this guy named Kareen Jacobs, who was the person that bought out like. Orion and Precision Power and all these other cool companies from the 90s and 80s and then just destroyed them all. It sucked. Okay. But I got to, there was this guy named Ron Phone that was the head of ADS Home and they kind of brought him in to save the company. Mm -hmm. And I was working for a rep at that time and we got to set up all this home stuff and there was these cabinets that were like this and they were they kind of look like the focal cabinets you know the ones that are like this and they were amplified though so you literally just plugged them in and oh my god they were it was so expensive and i just sat there and drooled over them because they were like this awesome wood but then they also had like insets of piano black oh, oh wow. so amazing uh they, they are, are a chinese company now yeah it kind of sucks when are you going to review the helix dsp we don't currently have a helix DSP here, we are gonna review it, or we're at least gonna do it here once we have hands on it. Get hands on it. We're yeah. working on getting one, just not diligently at the moment. The Dayton DSP is pretty cool for what it is. The Dayton DSP is pretty cool for what it is. If you guys have any more questions about this that you want me to talk about, by all means keep asking and we'll, we'll talk about it. So the DSR1, all right, that's a great question. It goes, hold on. It, so the DSR1 worth an extra $100 over the Dayton. There is good and bad on both, okay? No one makes a perfect DSP, that is for sure. If you're doing high level or low level, I feel the DSR-1 is probably a better if you're doing high level because it actually functions high level. This is kind of questionable. It's nice though because this has the Bluetooth streaming, but you still have to pay extra for it. So the DSR-1 has an aux jack input, so you can basically do the same thing with their add-on Bluetooth. So that doesn't come in the box, so that doesn't count good or bad. So they both can accomplish that cool task. This DRC is kind of nice because it plugs in and if you need to have that volume control all the time, but the DSR-1 you can control via an Apple Watch, your iPhone. So there again, it, it's kind of doable. I don't know how many of you have to use this as a standalone unit. The presets on this are definitely way cooler. I feel like the software for the DSR-1 is a little bit more thought out, per se. Where's it at? Um, like here is your subwoofer level control. And the other thing too is the DSR-1 will tilt, meaning it, it does either way. So if you're doing like an iPad in the dash or something like that, the, the Dayton isn't gonna work for you, whereas the DSR-1 will. Yeah, you this, control, is the, this is the knob. You can control all these master level control right there. So if you have this mounted in your dash, you're pretty cool. Or if you have your phone connected to it, you know, it will go either way. And this is the EQ. Um, for that so this is 32 band or 31 bands of equalization whereas this guy is only 10. this is 31 bands of parametric this is 10 bands of parametric i don't know how many flaws you have in your system where that would be important but that's kind of the difference there they both have tons of crossovers ton i mean tons yeah. of crossover Sound wise, we haven't been able to, to like play this enough to do it. This is gonna go into Fernando's car after we're done. So in a couple weeks, he'll have had some time to actually tell us, cause he's had the DSR-1 in there for months now. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to know that question, have that answer. What's up, Michael? Okay, so for the guy he asked about- Oh, and the DSR-1, you can have a dedicated bass knob. That you can't. Yeah, okay. Uh, 2019 Mustang GT Sing. 3 8 inch screen is there any harness so I don't have to cut my factory home yeah my factory wires yeah Ac yeah actually you can go on to iData Link Maestro mm -hmm. and they make a harness now so you can plug a, a, a Maestro I'm sorry a, a DSR1 right into it so you you pull the amplifier out of the pass the driver's kick panel 
plug it in, program your DSR-1, eight channel preamp output all day long, go to town. Nice. If you don't want to use a DSR-1, I strongly recommend using the DSR-1. It makes your job way easier. But you can buy the T-Harness. The problem with that car is it's a, it's a variable voltage output out of the radio, which is great. But where you get kind of lacking is on the turn-on section. The turn-on is data, or it's six volts. So we've had situations where when you remote start the car, the system turns on turns on the stereo, that sucks. Whereas if you do the DSR-1, iData takes care of that for you and gives you a 12 volt output. Plus you get a DSP. So yeah. for that car, I would strongly recommend doing that. Uh, okay, does it has a digital display controller option? No, this is it. And all this displays is volume and you can adjust your presets here. Six presets, that's it. That's it, that's all it does. All right, what's the next part? <laughs> podcast going to I like be one. a one about getting cheap tools. Okay. Oh, oh, I like the one about getting cheap tools. Yeah. Um, hopefully next week you'll see another podcast. That's that's our that's on our schedule for next week along with a bunch of other fun stuff we have scheduled for next week. Yeah. How easy is to overdrive the input on the day in DSP? The specs on it specs suck. The input voltage is 3.2 volts from the factory head unit. Um, there again, that's something we're going to have to do with time yeah. because we couldn't get any signal out of the high level section, so we just plugged his radio output directly into the RCAs. Mm -hmm. That is way. That was one of the things I was concerned with too. Is that it only? I, these guys should be ashamed of themselves with the amount of information they lack on this. I mean, it doesn't have an arms manual. It doesn't have squat. I mean, the only reason why we can finger through it so quick is because we've worked with tons of DSPs, so it's. Pretty straightforward. Without an idea, yeah. Um, but that was one of the things that I was worried about too. Was the 3.2 voltage volt input? I'm like, that's got to be wrong because it's literally nothing on the market, unless you're doing some cheap entry level system, is going to put out that amount of voltage. So I think it'll be okay. I don't think it's going to clip. I mean, I th I think it'll be all right. Uh, should I upgrade my DSR1 to an audio controlled DM810? Okay, so. We actually did the opposite of that. We the, the rep that is audio control rep is no longer the audio control rep. He gave up the line, but they're the Rockford rep. So we took out, he had all Rockford uh, mini T power amplifiers in it. So we took all those out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we left all those, but we took out the, the DM810 and put and a the DSR1 DSR into it mm -hmm. because we needed eight channels. He had eight channels. It was an Audi, uh, it was, it was actually a pretty clean signal out of front, left, and right. Somebody else had done the install. They just brought us in after the fact to switch the two mm -hmm. and fix what the other place didn't do right, meaning it had noise. Um, and after him having that, switching the two and playing with it for a couple of weeks, I gave him a call because I was curious. What was the difference between the DMA-10 versus the DSR-1? Could you notice a difference? Does it all sound the same? Are all DSPs created equal? Are they like radios where there's a certain amount of salt and pepper? You know, a Pioneer doesn't sound like a Kenwood, doesn't sound like an Alpine. And he was like, yeah, immediately, he goes, right away I could tell the difference. Mm -hmm. The the DM810 had a spaciousness to it that even though the crossover points are the same, the time delay is the same, and the volume, everything's the same. The, the sound difference, like there was just, it, he, he, he described it, because he's a home audio guy, he described it as like this, the spaciousness that the DM810 had that the DSR1 didn't have. And he had the DSR, I'm sorry, he had the DM810 for like a year and a half, two years. So he knew what it sounded like. He was, and then, you know, he was like, it's just, it's not as wide and as, mm, as everything's where it's supposed to be. It's just, yes, he could tell. Now, are you gonna be able to tell? I don't know. I mean, it just depends on how much of a, of a sound nerd you are. Yeah. Uh, do you think the Forza F8 uh, is output, sub, out, amp, convert, what? Okay, it does something to make it competitive. Do you think the Forza with the output, sub, amp can be competitive in SQ or does some... something? Yeah. Make it no, no, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, those little tiny eight channel DSP amplifiers are all the rage. Um, I think it's totally competitive in the SQ world. Um, why do I keep saying, um, when we were in, all right. 
What's up, Johnny? When we were in Indy, we went and talked to the guys over at ARC because I really want to get my hands on their eight channel DSP amplifier. It's just, I just want to play with it. And it's very much like a Forza. It's oddly enough, I don't know. Uh, not made, just because they made one and they're cool, they're gonna make one and they're cool. That's, that's about where the relationship ends as far as the yeah. similarities go. But when we sat in the ARC car, that's what they had. He had it three way, active, front, and then sub. And that was it. And uh, Jesus Christ, man. Um, that car was the best sounding car at the show, period. That was it. That was that was on. And then he went on to win um, in, in Dallas, this, yeah, whatever competition that was. Mm -hmm. So Brian at ARC is just a god when it comes to tuning. But yeah, remember, power isn't everything for SQ. Was that, John, was that Johnny I just saw? Yeah, that was Johnny. What's up, Johnny? Loud and clear, checking in. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see any reason why it's not. I mean, yeah, sure, you can get a boatload of power and do all kinds of neat stuff, but no, you know, sound quality doesn't have to be hard. Uh, can you use the Dayton? The DSP, uh, no, just no, just for a channel set? No, it's the it's no, just a, it's just a master a one. channel. No, it's a master volume. That's all it does. Whereas on like a DSR one, you can assign the DSR one external volume knob to be anything you want. All right, somebody say. I saw a count. Brian's Dodge, the crossovers in the head unit will be more accurate, but you can choose either. Oh, to stack them, both keep in mind. Okay, all right. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. face it. That's why I just used this one. It's yeah. so much better. Okay. All right, uh, some also still lives in the city, so. Hmm. When is Paul is going to hi what is it hire time? Haley to uh, help in the store? Uh, God, no. Uh, I wanted to have a real job. Is the Dayton DSP 408 good for Again, being? Uh, yes, beginners. yes, it is. It's a great idea for somebody that wants to. So, it, all right. So we have. You know, we did a review of this, an actual unboxing yeah. review of this little guy here. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, this is the DEQS 1000A. This is the same DSP that comes in the radios. It's nothing fancy. It's really, honestly, it's quite annoying. I, I wasn't a big fan of it. This, for what you're getting in, and especially when they have a sale on these things, is where I bought this at Christmas time when it was on sale. It was dirt cheap, and I bought all the accessories. Like, yes, this will get you into DSP. This will get you playing. It's actually a really advanced DSP, but mm -hmm. it's simple to use. Whether you're using it on the laptop or a, an iPad, it, it is a lot of fun. Yep. And that is the key. And it brings the, you know, that was the nice thing about the DSR-1, is both of these units bring that price point to play down, yep. and you're getting a really good product also, which is yep. important. Because, you know, you might decide that, hey, I really like this. And, I mean, yeah. for, for that $200 plus dollar price point that these are in, it's almost a no-brainer. If you don't have a DSP, buy one, put it in, and play with the damn thing, and just have some fun. All right, Brian, if you're going to buy anything from the store, you can call Paul uh, at the store. He will ship it to you. 727... Uh, seven two, two one, what is it? 727. Yeah. 216-6170. Two one, six, six, one, six, Say it again. 727-216-6170. <laughs> I never call the store. Never call the store. Uh... Why do I, geez, I'm yeah. being terrible today. Okay. I'm really tired. It's been a really yeah. long week. I know we didn't put out a ton of videos this week, but the ones we did put out were really important to get out. Like we had to get the Elevate yeah. video out this week. Um, it's a really nice piece, by the way. I mean, there were some strange comments about it. Like, and I'm like, dude, really? You, you got all that from a video? Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, should I swap my stereo in my Chevy Sonic with no Bluetooth or CD player for a new double DIN or add the DIN DSP with Bluetooth chip? Uh, I'm personally a fan of adding the radio, but if you like that factory dash and you're worried about theft or any of those things, mm -hmm. yeah, you can add this. That's a pretty straightforward swap out. Correct. I don't see a problem with yeah. doing that. Yeah, it'll yeah. work. Why not? Um, Jason. Jason, say have a great evening. Yeah. 
Good, and good day call off. On the time. Yes. Who's see you Monday? I, I thought he said day off. I like Monday. We had Monday off. I was like, wait, what? How do I know? Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm 6'2. Oh, yeah. He's Maryland a big and stuff. Dude. Henry. That's just thick. Yeah. Dude, dude um, we're watching your video, and I'm like, yeah, that's Johnny. You're like, I don't remember that was. I'm going to say like, what everyone says about me. I, yeah. I, they always say, I thought you were taller. I'm like, no, Fernando's just that much shorter. I thought he was shorter. No. He's no. tall. Jesus. <laughs> Six yeah, two, man. Big dude. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you, you guys. so much for watching today. We hope this answered some of your questions on this cool Dayton Audio guy. It, I would definitely, if you don't have a DSP and you want to get a DSP for a reasonable price, just so you can get in the game and start playing, oh, yeah, go ahead. Pick one of these up. It's totally worth it. I would recommend getting the Bluetooth dongle for sure. If you like controlling everything on your phone, yeah. I personally, I like the volume knob. I think that's a cool winner. Will it give you noise? Some people have said it, it will, so you're gonna have to be careful where you route that cable. And with that, we're gonna call it a night. Thank goodness we made it through an hour, yay. You guys have a happy, safe, and fun weekend. Make Correct. sure you check back here on Monday. We're gonna have Lori, that's gonna be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Lori from Kicker, we're gonna start our summer giveaway. Oddly enough, it might be something yeah. from Kicker. I don't no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're, but definitely check out that show or watch the rebroadcast on Tuesday here on YouTube. Anyone is going to be eligible to enter, which is going to be fun, but we'll talk about it on there. Mm -hmm. Just a giveaway. We got a cool thing. We want to give it to somebody. Yeah. But you are going to have to work for it. It's not going to be simple. But well, it is. But it, is. it isn't. Yeah. You actually have to do something. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, yes, you see you guys on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's for streaming and controlling the app. It yeah. does both. So mm -hmm. you can stream and control the app through the Bluetooth toggle. It's, it's pretty cool. But with that, you guys have a happy and safe weekend. Remember, Uber, Lyft, they're cheap. Don't do anything stupid because then you won't be able to be back here Monday. And make sure you go on Instagram and check out 5 Minutes with 5 Star. Bye, Roller. It's a new series we're going to be doing. It's going to be fun. We're just evolving it now, so it's going to get better and better and better, just like all the things that we do we try to make better for you and with that fernando hit the stop button so we can let these people go